Hello, my beautiful Cancerian friends, and welcome to your horoscope for August of 2020, where this month, Cancer, Venus moves into your sign, and I think it is absolutely delicious. I love when Venus moves into the first house, because there's just something beautiful and magnetic that comes along with it. So that'll be an absolute peach for you this month not to mention we've got a new moon happening in a set in your second house we've got a full moon happening in your eighth house so finances we know that you're coming into a little bit of a space of some good financial intuition and potential opportunities as well so i think it's going to be a pretty neat month to see what's going on and as always cancer relationships are never without their excitement when it comes to your life, right? And Uranus is retrograde in the 11th house, seeks to bring a little bit more excitement or a little bit more evaluation to your relationship zone, including friends and organizations as they fit into your long range plans. Some of those things can't travel forward with you anymore. It's time to put them down for some freedom. We'll talk all about that in just a second, but before we jump in there, the eat and greets this month are continuing and I am so excited. I've got beautiful guests to bring you this month. Glenn Mitchell will be here, Kathy Rose, Kay Taylor, Susan Miller will be here, here, be here, and Clarissa Dolphin as well. So I think it's gonna be a beautiful month of contact in the eat and greets. I hope you look forward to coming to study and and to learn and to see what's being taught as well on um August 7th through the 9th, I will be a part of the Astrology for Power and Purpose Summit. It's absolutely free. I would love to see you over there. If you need a mid-year check-in, if you need some inspiration, if you need to be empowered, if you just want to talk astrology, come join in. It is absolutely free. It is myself and 17 other astrologers coming to just share the gift of astrology with you. Many different perspectives you can use it for. So gosh, come over. It's absolutely free. Okay. All right, you guys, let's jump in and talk about what's happening this month. So right as we're coming into the month, we've got a full moon leading us in. Now the moon is your ruler. So you always kind of are paying attention when anything is happening. Every month, there's a sense of attention that I think be, is brought to your forefront. This one is in the energy of Aquarius. Now this is going to light up your eighth house. The eighth house is joint resources. It's sex. It's the place that we connect intimately with other human beings or other resources, right? Because this can also be an inheritance. This can be taxes. This can be insurance. This can be ideas that we have around death and astrology, but it is a deep, intimate, not afraid to get into the ickies of it kind of placement. The full moon says that we need to end something, acknowledge something, or bring an adjustment to the table, but it's going to shed a whole bunch of light on this particular arena of your life so that you can see what needs to happen. Now, one of the questions I have as you approach this full moon at the beginning of the month is going to be, what kind of behavior specifically do you need to bring to the table in order to have freedom in this particular area of your life in order to have some success. Aquarius really is very future-minded and they do want success. So in your joint resources, where you're tied to something else, where do you need to look at your behaviors that are going to ensure that you're able to have some success going forward, right? This is a beautiful energy to think outside of your box if you've been feeling like you're in a little bit of a rut or something like that. It's also great for looking at friendships, organizations, or things like that that are also tied to or engaged in your finances, your insurance, any of those kinds of things. And some of you flat out will just be getting different insurance plans or something like that. And if it's time for it, it's just time for it. On the fifth, we see Mercury moving into the energy of Leo. This is going to light up your second house. Now bringing you Things of Mercury, of the mind, communication, decision-making. Mercury is very business savvy, detail savvy. So in the energy of your second house, you have him here, not only ready to be all Leo and express yourself, but also to say, what do I need to do with my money? What are decisions I need to make around my finances? What decisions have I made? What confidence has come to me over this year that I'm ready to share myself out in the world very self-confidently? I wouldn't be surprised at all either if this particular energy isn't making you think about sharing your money 
with someone or sharing a resource with someone, even if it's just a joint collaboration in some way, shape or form, it's almost like this brings a really collaborative, we can definitely both get value energy out of it. Leo is very, very generous, but it also does want to express. So if you're here in this particular area and you're like, I can use my talents to express myself and make money, this may be a wonderful place for you to be making those decisions and those connections as well. On the seventh, we see Venus moving into your sign, into the energy of cancer. Now, first of all, this does bring a magnetism to the body. It softens you. It's magnetic. It calls things to you for sure. But also Venus coming into your first house. Don't be surprised if you're feeling even a little bit more like being a homebody, right? You're like, no, I want to beautify my home. I want to beautify my space. I want to beautify me. I'd like to just be at home and have a nice meal, a nice snack or something like that. It's also phenomenal for you, Cancer, for bringing harmony to the relationships that you're in. If in relationships, friendships, romance, finance, whatever it is, any place you show up in your life, Venus can come and bring a sense of harmony to that particular area. It's great for being diplomatic. So if there are conversations that need to be had, if you're doing this collaboration of whatever that looks like, this is going to be helpful to you in that particular area as well. So I really love Venus coming into your sign. On the 15th now, Uranus is going to take this retrograde in the energy of Taurus, which lights up your 11th house. Now, you are naturally quite comfortable with Taurus energy. This earth and this water combination go very well, but the earth has been being shaken up for a while. So I know your 11th house, friends, long-range goals, plans, associations, these things have been getting a change. You have been put in a position where you're having to look at these things differently and also detach from some things from the past that are just not a great fit for you anymore. Now, as Uranus takes this retrograde through your 11th house, you're going to go back over and question which things you need to put down or break away from because they no longer allow you to be who you need to be. They keep you hindered and what you are going for with a Uranus retrograde is freedom. What do you need to do to have freedom? in this particular area of your life, which friends need to be put down, not even just friends, which acquaintances are taking up time. You're taking up and wasting their time as well. And it's like, no, let's put this down because you want to have the freedom of value in this particular area. Taurus is all about that value. And truly, if you have financial things or relationship things that are just hanging out, taking up your goodness, your freedom, your honest is going to help you break free of that by the time we get to January of 2021. On the 19th, we've got that new moon happening in Leo. So now we've got the new moon over there. We've got Mercury over there, so you've got some financial savvy on your table. At the new moon, we're planting these seeds of intention. What would you like to see happen in your financial life? What would you like to see happen in how you regard yourself and in your self-esteem? Are you trying to put yourself out there and you're just, you still got this doubt going on, right? This is an energy. Leo is like, no, we are bad. Let's go out here. Let's put ourselves out here. So over the next four weeks, plant these seeds of intention for that, that Leo-esque confidence to come your way because you've probably got skills, talent, and everything else that you could be using to make money. You could be showing up at the office if you're even allowed to go to the office in a different way that really raises your self-esteem as well. And the other thing that this Leo new moon I think is really good for for you is in the arena of value and what you value. This is really showing you that you're capable of very, very big, brave, bold love. And I think that is really important for you Cancerians to know right now. On the 20th, we've got Mercury moving into the energy of Virgo, which lights up your third house. And as we close out the month, we're going to see the sun moving into the energy of Virgo as well. Now, these two energies here in the third house, which is communications, siblings, contracts, buying, selling, um, your website, teaching something, learning something, the home of communication. It's definitely the home of your mind. So you've got the sun, light, heat, life, and vitality bringing extra energy. You want to be seen here. You are motivated in this area. And then you've got Mercury coming along who's bringing your mind. He's very comfortable in this third house and in Virgo. So in this area of your life, even just in your dang paperwork, you're able to get organized. You're able to get reorganized if that's what needs to happen here. You're able to have the 
conversations that you need to have. In dealing with anything that has to do with conversation, needs negotiation, needs diplomacy. You've got Venus rolling through your sign, so being diplomatic and just too cute is really in your favor this month. But it is also with Mercury here, you're able to be diplomatic and have the conversations that you need to with some ease, right? You're down in the details of what this needs to look like. It's really a really lovely, lovely energy. So in your third house too, if you do need to focus on something with your siblings and you need to be in the details of it, this is going to be an energy that helps you here, here as well. One other thing I'm thinking about for you Cancerians that's just coming through a little bit is I'm being shown your mind, just your mind. If it, this is a time where you're getting your mind healthy or you're getting your mind back into a proper alignment of, of calm, of good things can happen, of really that positive position of the mind, this is going to be a wonderful four weeks to allow that to happen as well. So I think it's going to be a good month. I just feel like Venus is going to do you right this month, Cancer. Make sure you don't go too far with the Venus where she has you spending all your money on face cream and snacks or something like that. Instead, use her well. Be magnetic. And remember with Venus, you don't actually have to go get anything. You can allow energies to come to you now because you are a beautiful magnetic force over this next handful of weeks. All right, Cancers, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'm sending you all of my love this month, and I look forward to seeing you in the eat and greets at the Summit for Power and Purpose, and of course, every week in the weekly videos. Bye, Cancers.